Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be reviewing Jump Drive. This game was designed by Tom Lehman, and it is a light 15 or so minute long game that is a hand management engine building style game that is set in the Race for the Galaxy thematic universe. It also uses some of the Race for the Galaxy mechanics and can be seen as a lighter version of that game. First, I'll explain how the game works, and then I'll jump into my review. In order to set up Jump Drive, you just put this big pile of victory points in the middle of the table. You put out one of these survey teams per player, so this would be a four-player game. You can put all these explore tokens out, and then you can shuffle up this big deck of these Jump Drive cards and deal out seven of these cards to each player. They can choose five and discard two, or there are some pre-constructed hands of just five cards that you can start off with by doing that instead. All play in Jump Drive is simultaneous, and to start a player's turn, they need to figure out if they're going to play 0, 1, or 2 cards. Now, if they play 0 cards, that means they actually don't like these cards in their hand. They grab one of these exploration tokens from the middle of the table, and they then count up the number of these eyeball symbols they have in all of their area. If, for instance, they had this Galactic Trendsetters down already, we see one eyeball, and then we add three to it that are on this tile, so that's four eyeballs total. Then you add to that two cards, and we're going to draw six cards from the top of this deck, and then they're going to have to discard cards that are equal to the number of eyes they have, which at the moment would be four. So no matter what, when you do an explore action, you are going to be gaining two cards into your hand. Once you're done doing this, you can just flip that over, and then while these are not actually component limited, nobody can use this specific exploration token again. If instead you had decided you want to play a single card, then you could choose either one of your uh, developments, which is shown by this diamond, or one of your planets, which is shown by the circle. If, for instance, they want to play this space marine, they then have to discard uh, two cards from their hand, and it's just the value in the number that they have to discard. But as a bonus, if they play just a single card and it's a development, they get a minus one discount, so they'd only have to lose one card from their hand to play this one. There are also these survey teams up here, and there's one per player. You can never have more than one, that's why there's four out here in a four-player game. And you can instead choose to grab one of these and put it down. Obviously, if this is the only card you're playing, then at a minus one discount means playing this card is actually free into your tableau. The next option is we can play one of these planet cards from our hand down, and you don't get a discount if you just play a planet card. Instead, you have to pay the full cost, which in this case would be four, so we'd have to discard all four of these to the discard pile, but then we get a rebate of one card from the top of the deck back into our hand for future turns. Now, you may have noticed that some of these planets have the black number, and some of them have the red. Now, for red planets, you don't actually discard anything from your hand. You just have to prove that you have enough military strength to match this number. In this case, it would be two. And at the beginning of the game, we have no military strength, although if we had developed this survey team, it does give plus one. So you need a little bit more of these little red circles in order to get to the point where you can actually play down this former penal colony, but that's the other type of planet. And uh, lastly, you can actually play two cards on your turn, as long as one of them is going to be something like this as a development, and the other one is going to be a planet. Now, there are no benefits to uh, doing this. There's no perks. You have to pay the full cost. In this case, that would be five cards, and we only have four cards left in our hand, so we would not even be able to pull this off at this moment. Obviously, it's nice getting more cards down into your tableau, but you have to be able to afford it, which is why you'll sometimes be doing one card and other times be playing two. Let's say, for example, that this formal penal colony was not in our hand to start. We actually had this ancient races. Then, as a starting turn, we could just play this down, discard these two cards, grab one from the top of the deck, and then move on to the next phase, which is where we actually generate victory points. And this, you can see, is down here in this box, and this little symbol is a victory point symbol, so that means this ancient races will get us one victory point. And then after we are able to add up all of these symbols on all of our various cards, for instance, the survey team gives you zero points, you grab those points, put them in front of you, and then you take your income, in which case you just look to the other symbol at the bottom of this card, we see that it's two, you add up all of those numbers, and then you draw that many cards from the top of the deck as income, and if after you do this you have more than 10 cards in your hand, you'll have to discard cards down until you have only 10 cards in your hand. Now, for many of the cards like this one, they're rather simple. It's just obvious, just one victory point and two money, but there are also cards in this deck that have special rules on them. They are written in the box that are just above. For instance, this mining robots gives you a discount of one whenever you place down a brown world, and all of these effects are pretty self-explanatory, and they are a permanent ongoing thing that happen whenever the condition arises. Once everybody has taken their victory points and gathered new cards into their hand, you will go on to the next turn and play it out in just the same way, and turns are going to keep going with people evaluating all of the bonuses on all the cards that are down in the bottom of their overall tableau, and you're going to keep playing until the end of a turn where one player has 50 or more victory points in front of their area, and at that point the game is over and whoever has the most victory points is the winner.
Let's now begin the review for Jump Drive by covering a couple positive points. And the first of these relates to the overall hand management uh, puzzle that you have as you're playing this game. Uh, this is one of those games where you have to discard cards from your hand to pay for other cards that you put down. This is far from the first game to do it. Uh, Race for the Galaxy, uh, which is the uh, bigger version of Jump Drive, uh, certainly had that as a central mechanism. And it works well here as well, because in this game, every single card is a piece that could work into your engine. And the, the, the cards are uh, simple enough that it's quite obvious how they're going to work and how they're going to synergize with other things. And you're probably going to often have situations where you have a hand of cards and you want to play multiple of these cards because they work really well together and you need to figure out well, how much you can potentially stall before actually playing these things down to get uh, more income so that you can afford to get all these down. Or you just say, you know what, this would be a great combo together, but I don't have that much time, so I'm going to do this one instead of these others and discard those to pay for getting that one down. And this also leads me to a, a pretty neat idea where when it comes to on your turn, you're playing uh, one card or two cards. And if the card is a development, then you get a discount on putting that down. If the one card you put down is a planet, then you have to pay full price, but then you get a rebate of drawing another card from the top or you just play two cards down with no particular bonus so you are not only thinking about um, how you can afford all these cards in your hand but you're also trying to figure out the various tempos of the specific play because obviously getting more cards down is good because it's going to ramp your engine up faster but having these other little perks might also be worth it because it'll allow you to get that one card down that you need with the discount so that next turn you can play the other one as part of your combo so i think that the relatively um, simple and clear nature of the engine building uh, text on the cards works well for this and the overall hand management is an enjoyable experience. Positive number two relates to the speed and ease at which you can teach this game to do players. It is a relatively streamlined experience and the rules are also streamlined where you can, uh, I mean, I guess to a certain extent I taught most of the game just in positive point number two explaining how the hand management worked because you are pretty much just placing two cards down with no benefit or the uh, single development or the single planet and that is going to incorporate probably 80% of the rules. And there are some edge case things like, you know, hand limits as well as some of the cards are a little bit more complicated and then there is the explore action which I'll talk about a little bit later on in the review. But for the most part, it seems like you can get this game out, shuffle the main uh, deck of cards, and actually be playing it probably two to three minutes uh, in, and that is a good thing. You don't need to necessarily uh, layer everything on right uh, from the get-go, in particular with things like Explorer. You don't need to talk about that at all for your first uh, at least turn because everybody should have enough cards in their hand to do something interesting. So yeah, it's quick and it's easy to teach and learn, and that's definitely a benefit. Next up, let's move on to a couple neutral points. And the first of these has to do with how this game seems to end before I want it to. Now, this is an engine building style game. And of course, there is um, a lot of enjoyment that comes from starting off with nothing and then building up, building up and ramping into this really nice engine. But what I found is that when the game ends, I usually feel like I, f I want the game to last for another, I don't know, 30 to 40% longer. Uh, because it's like I'm just finally starting to get things in. It seems like most games take like six to seven turns or something like that. And there's only so much that you can do in that many turns of the game. And oftentimes you just got the really cool card out um, on that turn or the turn before. So it feels like, no, I'm, I'm starting to build this thing. I want to play around with this thing I created more um, than just kind of stop and then throw all the cards back in the box because the game is over because somebody was able to jump over 50 points. It might even be you and you'll still feel like I just wanted this game to go a little bit longer. I feel like maybe uh, as as far as uh, I'm concerned, it shot itself in the foot a little bit by being more of a 15-minute game versus a 30-minute experience, but I also know that it was trying to be streamlined, and uh, especially a streamlined version of Race for the Galaxy, and people who are very good at Race for the Galaxy can play a game of that in under 30 minutes, but I think for most people who are not experts at that game, Race for the Galaxy is more of an hour-long experience, and for me, I feel like this one would have been a little bit better if it had been on the 30-minute range instead of 15. For neutral number two, I want to talk about how this game has zero player interaction. It is completely multiplayer solitaire. There is nothing that you will do on any of your turns that will impact how your uh, opponents are going to play. This is a situation where you are just trying to do the best you can with the hands of cards that you are uh, starting with at the beginning of the game and then building into as you get your uh, victory point engine up and you get your income going. And that means that well, on the one hand, it doesn't have any conflict, and uh, that will work out well for people who don't like conflicting with other players. It really is just see who can build a better engine faster. But that also means that uh, if you are three or four turns in and you're like, okay, I made six victory points, and your opponent says, okay, I made 12, 
Well, you could probably see that you're going to lose already because there's nothing you can do to slow them down. Even if this is a four-player game, it doesn't have anything you can do to um, uh, interact with your opponents. And oftentimes in games, in that situation, maybe three players would do something that would kind of gang up and slow that one person down who is just kind of uh, running away with a potential victory. And I'm not saying that I've seen a uh, runaway leader be necessarily a problem. Uh, and it is less of an issue in a game that is only 15 minutes long. If seven minutes into those 15 minutes, you realize that you're probably not going to win, but in general, it does seem like maybe this game could have done with a little bit of uh, player interaction, um, even if it was uh, indirect and minor, but there is none here, and that's definitely something you should know going in. Let's now move over to the negative section, and I have a couple I want to talk about here. The first has to do with the explore action, and there's a couple things that I don't love about it. And the first is just understanding how it's supposed to work based off of the rules. Now, this game is very easy and quick to teach until you get to the explore action, and where this is where it gets a little bit convoluted, and it seems to trip over on itself because according to the rules, it does not explicitly say if these are supposed to be one-time use. There are eight of them, um, and I, when I looked up online, I found out that they are one-time use, but they're not component limited, so if you run out, then you could just use something else, uh, which is a little bit funky, and then you try to teach how this tile works, and it has the three eyeballs on it, and then a slash, and then a couple cards, and then some plus eyeball and minus eyeball on there, and it does make sense once you finally understand that it's supposed to be, you have a base three eyeballs, and then you add to that a couple cards, and then the eyeballs that are on your tableau, and at the end of the day, you're going to be keeping two cards, but it just feels a little bit convoluted to teach. The tile itself does not do itself any favors, and then this leads me to the other thing where when I've uh, taught the game, I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, you know what, don't really worry about it. You're probably not going to be doing it anyway, and if you do, you're probably going to lose. Uh, and that's because losing an entire turn to do an explore action um, is so costly when it comes to the ramp up of points that are in this game. And of course, I've only taught this game a couple times, and I'll explain that a little bit more when I get to the conclusion, but it does seem like when you only have like six or seven turns, losing an entire turn is just going to knock you completely out of the running. And odds are good you're only taking the explore action if you have to because you don't have enough cards in your hand because you haven't been able to get enough of a, um, a card income engine going. And I... <laughs> I don't have like a solution to this. I'm not a game designer by any means, but it seems like I would rather not have that explore action at all. It feels a bit tacked on and clunky, and I would rather just have the balance of the overall cards be a little bit different, or maybe have everybody start with one card in their tableau, and on that card you have the three eyeballs or something like that. So it's a little bit more uh, obvious what your starting explore level is, or perhaps you have a starting card that increases that has your income start from the very beginning at one or two cards, so you're much less likely to find yourself in a situation where you have um, just no uh, cards that you can actually play because you don't have enough income. Uh, when it comes to actually just digging deep into that deck, it just doesn't seem like it's worth uh, forfeiting a turn where you could have done something else to try and dig deep into the deck and find that one perfect card that might or might not be there for you. I guess to a certain extent this could be a Hail Mary, but I've not really seen it used as such. And yeah, just in general, the whole explore action has seemed a little bit weird, a little bit clunky, and I don't really like how it's been implemented. For negative number two, I want to discuss the level of ownership that players feel on the outcome of the game. And from my experience, it seems like whether you won or lost, players don't really feel like they necessarily deserved it either way. And a big part of that has to do with the fact that this game is going to take only like six to eight turns in general, and the luck of the draw becomes exacerbated when it comes to this situation, especially if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough cards in your hand because you have not really been pulling cards that give you good income, and then you take a turn to explore, then you really feel like you're out of it because you've taken so many, uh, so few turns in this game. And what that means is you can easily get to the end of the game and say, I lost because I didn't draw the right cards. And if you have a situation where you feel like that, then you don't you're not going to feel any tension. You're not going to have emotion. You're not going to feel like you are vested in the actual actions that you're playing throughout the game. It would almost feel like the game is sort of playing itself based on the cards that you're pulling into your hand. And there are good decisions to be made about how you play through your hand and which cards you discard. I'm not saying that the game is on autopilot, but it does seem like the opportunities that are given to players will uh, vary drastically. And when you have such a tiny data set of hands that you're going to be playing, the look of the draw can become exacerbated. The other thing is that there is a pretty big disparity of power between one card to the next when it comes to what's in that big deck of cards. Um, there are many cards that might give you one or two victory points and then maybe one or two uh, income and then some of them will scale up and give you like maybe five victory points or maybe even seven victory points. But then there are other mega cards that you can play down 
usually in the later stages of the game, that might just give you like 16, 18, or 20 victory points by just smashing that down. And you maybe were just making like 12 victory points the turn before that. So you went from making 12 to like 30 or 32 points in one turn. And then the threshold for the game end is 50 points, which means oftentimes when you smack one of those cards down, the game just ends and then you won because you were able to get that card down. And even if the game does not end on a turn where somebody gets one of these big, um, uh, very powerful cards down, it seems like the writing's on the wall, like everybody else has maybe one turn to draw the perfect card that fits for what they have put down in front of themselves, and if they do, then maybe they're in contention, and if they don't, well then they're not. And once again, it feels like it comes down to the luck of the draw if you are given the opportunity to succeed in this game or not, and I feel like I want to be much more vested in the decisions and the outcomes of a game like this. Next up, let's discuss the variability for Jump Drive, and I think that is pretty average for this style of hand management card game. The deck is very large, and while there are duplicates to uh, some of the cards in that deck, it does seem like when you play one game to the next, you are going to be provided with a uh, significantly different set of opportunities, and you might be building a military engine in one game, and in the next game you will be not even touching military and doing something else, like maybe going crazy on the Galactic Trendsetters. It does depend on the uh, the cards that you're pulling into your hand, that means there is definitely a tactical feel, and and um, it does mean that the variability is is okay. I don't think it's bad, and I don't think it's necessarily above average either. Um, it's nice to see a wide variety of cards, and that is definitely here in the deck. Jump Drive plays two to four players, and I've done the uh, two and four player experience. And since this is a game with zero player interaction, as well as simultaneous actions, it means that there is virtually no difference between any of these player counts. I suppose at a four uh, player count, you might have a, be slightly longer because there's uh, the odds are higher that one person is gonna be suffering from a little bit of AP. Maybe they have like 15 cards in their hand and they, they need to figure out which five cards they need to discard to get back down to that hand limit of 10 or something like that. So I think that I would give a slight advantage to the two player game as opposed to the higher uh, levels, also because you're less likely to have a situation where one player just gets an amazing combo and blows the game out when it's just you versus one other player. But again, it's essentially the same game no matter how many people you're playing with. In conclusion, I've played Jump Drive only three times at this point, and that might seem really low considering this is a 15 minute or so game, and the reason why I am reviewing it now instead of playing it a bunch more times is that I think I'm already done with it as an experience. I just don't see myself being interested in playing it anymore, and I don't really want to spend even the 15 minutes playing it more to try and have more to say about it. I feel like my opinion is already relatively locked in. I feel like that there is not enough ownership of the uh, loss or the victory when you're actually playing this game because the game is just too short. I think the, the biggest uh, impact on uh, you could potentially change this game to make it more fitting for me is if it was designed to be twice as long, so it was more of a 30 minute experience. I enjoy the light engine building um, nature of the game. I think it's a great uh, concept uh, for a lighter version of Race for the Galaxy. I think that uh, many of the combos that you're gonna be putting together do feel satisfying and fun. It's great to see the escalation happen, but I also think that the um, big disparity between the power level of some of these cards is a problem as well. Like on the one hand, you could just say, well, make the scoring threshold 150. But in that case, I think I would probably have to go through the whole deck and just remove a lot of those high value cards that can just instantly give you like um, 15 to 20 points because those are especially gonna scale even more as you get more and more cards in your tableau. And honestly, it would probably get uh, more difficult to actually track um, as you get later on in the game, just how much income you have and just how much uh, how many victory points you're getting. Maybe in that case, you would have needed a, a dial spinner to kind of keep in line where you were at and how that maybe changed. But in general, I just think that this game is not worth playing for me, even at a 15 minute time frame. I would rather just have a conversation with somebody or play another filler style game where I feel like a, a sense of ownership over whether I did well or not. Like this almost feels like an activity with some interesting decisions sprinkled throughout. And um, that's been my impression. And then that's been the impression of most of the people I've actually played this game with. So for me, this game is a bit of a pass. I'm gonna be um, uh, losing it from the collection relatively soon here. And hopefully this works out for some people and maybe it will be a nice ramp into um, Race for the Galaxy for others. But for me, this one does not really have the staying power that I was looking for. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting my channel through Patreon, including all of these producer level pledges. If you too would like to directly support the channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash Games, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see more in-depth board game reviews like this one, as well as full game playthroughs and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.